Hey everybody, welcome to STEM Works in the Berks. This video series is meant to show you all of the career opportunities in science, technology, engineering, and math right here in our beautiful backyard of Berkshire County. and welcome back to another edition of STEM Works in the Berks. I'm here at one of the most exciting places in Berkshire County. This is Crane Currency. And today we're going to be interviewing Bill Bartz, who is the technical director here. And yes, Crane Currency, as in we're making some money today. So welcome, Bill. Oh, thanks very much, Erica. Great to be part of this. So tell everybody, what does Crane Currency do? Crane Currency makes the currency paper for U.S. government banknotes. So our customer, the Bureau of Engraving, buys sheets of currency paper from us from which they print the notes in Washington, D.C. and Fort Worth, Texas, and of course have them in your wallet to use for daily commerce and your activities. Okay, so i got to break that down. So you guys aren't making the full money. You're not making right. the thing that's in our pocket, but you're making the under the under layer, like the paper layer that other people right. print the money. Sheets of paper that have a multiple number of notes that will eventually be printed on it and cut into note size at the Bureau of Engraving and Printing. So we'll send uh, sheets of paper approximately this size or a little bit bigger stacked on a pallet and that's actually the product that we develop uh, or deliver to our customer. Interesting. So you're the technical director. My first question is why would we need a technical director to make paper? So this must be more complicated. So tell, tell me what is the technology involved in all this? Well, it's a very complex process. Paper making itself, being really an ancient art, mm. from an artisan point of view, an artistic point of view, yes, it can make paper pretty easily. But imagine trying to make a million sheets a day, okay, running 24 lot. hours, to supply a customer day in, day out, week after week, month after month, year after year. And we do spend a lot of money. I can say personally, we do spend a lot of money. We need to have big machines to do this. We need to have a standard process to do this. We have to have workers that are here around the clock to be able to produce this. Wow. There's a lot of technical aspects to this. From, so from what was an art form, we had to turn into using technology, engineering skills, and knowledge of science uh, in order to develop processes that we can run day in, day out for manufacturability. Awesome. Well, I can tell I've come to the right place because, as you know, our viewers are STEM students. So talk to us a little bit about what STEM jobs you could do here at Crane. Well, in order to support these manufacturing operations, we have to have a number of engineers. And so as technical director, I oversee a group of process engineers. Okay. So we have a, about uh, six of them right now. We're continuing to hire more and more because of the complexity of putting together security features that you see with the paper making process. There's just a lot to it. So it's that day-to-day -day manufacturing support to ensure that we're making good quality product, and production rates that we have. It's this idea of continuous improvement. We want to make things better. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm we sure want to faster make... and cheaper and all those exactly. things. Exactly. Yep. That's what improvement's all about. And then support our customer. Definitely. So at the root of it, engineers, uh, we love to solve problems. We love to help. And there's lots of uh, things for us to take on with a complex product like U.S. currency paper. Cool. So I, I know engineers, and I've also heard that you have some other types of tech jobs here that exist. Yeah, so not only the process engineers, we also have engineers that do project work for installing new equipment. We also have a bunch of technicians in different areas, whether it's quality or research and development, also scientists in research and development. Okay, great. To develop new features, improve uh, some of the aspects of the paper for use as banknotes. So lots of different opportunities are there. From, um, from all levels, people right out of high school that can do technical, uh, technician kind of jobs, those with uh, associate's degrees, and of course scientists and engineers that come from college uh, experiences there. But you know, in terms of the 300 people here in Dalton, you know, a good 40 to 50 are wow. those that would have to have some kind of a real, real technical background to, to help with a complex product that we make. And growing. And growing. Yeah. Cool. So what do you, uh, tell me about some of your favorite aspects of working here. What do you love about working here? Well, we make the most interesting paper there is in the world. <laughs> we also make a product that everybody around the entire world is familiar with. Right. So how many jobs are there where you could say, I, I work on U.S. Uh, currency paper, and as an example, you can pull out a wallet and show it. Right, that's true. I bet you have a good time at parties. Exactly. <laughs> You're and always the relevant guy. And everybody's interested in money. Right. 
But grain has a, a really rich history here. We've been here since 1801 making paper. We've had the U.S. currency business since 1879. There's a long history of making this product. So there's a lot of pride in making it. And so being part of that, the collaborative spirit that we have here, this great pride that we take in making a product that in the end really underpins the United States economy. Totally. Uh, currency is part of you know, the confidence of, of uh, people have in our government and our economic system and so we're just a part of that so a lot of pride stability in, in yeah take. exactly so I also hear there's some perks about working here though some things like tuition reimbursement and other perks yes exactly it's one of the really great benefits that we have is for those that are interested in furthering their education uh, whether they come with high school backgrounds or they already have college degrees and they want to get graduate work we mm -hmm. offer tuition reimbursement in fact a number of the engineers that work in my area almost half of them actually are taking advantage of this to get graduate degrees oh, wow. while working here nice and there's of course several others too they're just trying to further their, their own educations to give them enhanced opportunities for supervisory or managerial roles at some point so great opportunity there Great. And so now let's talk a little bit about skills. So what do you see from your experience makes somebody successful here? What kind of skills make them successful? Well, in the field of STEM, it really starts with curiosity and inquisitiveness. Mm. Why does it work this way? Why does this happen? Why is when we do this, this is a result of that? So that's really that, that drive that I think attracts people to the, the science engineering field there. And then, of course, getting that, that field of knowledge from sure. study to, to be able background. to master that mm -hmm. and then to be able to apply those principles. Uh, uh, skills and collaborative teamwork are very important here. Mm. Complex product, we all have to work together towards you know, big goals and trying to figure out large problems or develop something that's never been made before. Innovation. Innovation, mm -hmm. inventing something new, some, some of the security features, developing a process to put them into paper, for example. And then the dedication. Dedication, okay. You know, we're here for for a long time, we come from a long line of people before us that have dedicated themselves to making these products. We feel like it's our turn now to do that and to carry it out for the, the next generation and you know, learn more and pass that on. So wanting to be a part of something like that. Yeah, that, something you know, that bigger than ourselves. That has kind of legacy, yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Cool. So if people are now excited about this and thinking, you know, I could see myself maybe working there, tell us how we could find out more about opportunities. Well, Crane does have a website, uh, cranecurrency.com, which uh, not only shows information about the company, not only here in uh, Western Massachusetts, but of course we are a global company with operations overseas, uh, but also has a career section there. Okay. Which you could apply as at Crane Connect. You can submit a resume. Also review the, the jobs that are currently available, which there are generally quite a number of them. Uh, so that's, that would be the, the entry point. Great. And there's always networking because we love to encourage students to try Absolutely. to meet people who work at this company and get to know them and opportunities to do that. Absolutely. Great. And I maybe just end with, do you have any advice or words of wisdom for our students who happen to be watching? Uh, I would give the advice of uh, if you want to make it happen, you have to go out and seize it. Up to you to ask those questions, to ask for what you want and make it happen. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Bill. Really this has been it. very fun. Is there anything behind me that you want to show or highlight? Or? Well, what you see in the backdrop here is a blow up the, the new $100 banknote, which was issued in 2013, but this took us over 10 years of development, the technical aspects of this. Wow. So the paper making, of course, is well understood, but developing a new feature, the, the moving image here, of this 3D blue ribbon, and a process to put that into paper took a decade to develop. So that's the kind of work wow. that we can do to take it to a whole new level. There's nothing else like it in the world. We had to invent processes in order to put this into place. And then, uh, do and we not, have the most complicated money? Yeah, this is one of the, the, yeah. most, this, the most complicated feature, most effective and counterfeiting feature out in the marketplace today. Wow. And you All guys are behind it. In great. Wow, great. that's exciting. So, Bill, I hear that we have a special guest. Um, I didn't mention this, but we're at the Crane Papermaking Museum. And so we just happen to have with us the historian that oh, works here. Yes. So let's bring Peter on and let's, uh, let's hear a little bit of the history of this amazing place. Hi. Hey, Peter. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. So you're the historian here. Yes, yes. It's sort of a, a very uh, unusual job. I would say. Uh, but there, because there aren't very many companies old enough to have a historian. I saw on the sign outside 1801. Yes. That's amazing. That's when uh, younger Zenas Crane 
came here at age 22 to found this company. Wow. So they started much earlier than, than we do these days. And he also came from a papermaking family. Um, the original Crane Mill goes back to 1770 in the Boston suburb of Milton. Um, and <clears throat> they didn't leave anything on the table when they named the mill. They called it the Liberty Paper Mill. No guesswork right. in terms of, of we know who did business here. there, yeah. including Paul Revere. He was our first currency paper customer in 1776. Wow. So that's when it started, and they're still at it today. That's quite a legacy. Isn't it? Yeah. So, you know, we have STEM viewers who are yes. watching this thing. So, you know, the more geeky we can be here, the better. So tell us a little bit about, you know, from your perspective as the historian, how has this um, changed from a technology perspective? Um, I arrived here in 1989 and at that time um, the only features in U.S. currency to prevent counterfeiting and, and promote authentication were these little blue and red fibers. Ah. And every bill looked pretty much like that. It had somebody's different face on it and the corners were, were different. Um, but with the advent of digital reproduction technology, scanners, cameras, copiers, um, there was this phenomenon called, this white collar crime called the crime of opportunity. Ah. Which means it's Friday afternoon, it's 5.30, you're the last one in the office, color copier, make some hundreds for the weekend. <laughs> Happened often enough not to crash the economy for, for us to understand and foreshadow what we knew was going to happen, which has already happened today, and that's that exponential rise um, in digital uh, technology. Um, and so in a very compressed um, period of time, um, by adding uh, embedded security threads and watermarks and um, other features, Crane transformed itself from a paper company to a technology company. And it seemed like it was almost overnight. There was, I, I remember that uh, in the mill, every piece of currency paper was scanned by hand. Well, you can't really do that in, with security features, so we had to develop systems, wow. vision systems that would find things that are right, and if they're wrong, feedback system to the beginning of the machine, make it right, uh, to actually had to teach the machinery to recognize faces in the watermarks. So if Ben Franklin's nose is a little too, too light, you can't powder it, but <laughs> it will reject that sheet later on because it's not uh, up to spec. Wow. Super and so the, the, as, as Bill, I think, met, yeah. uh, mentioned, the, 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 the character of employment here has changed equally as dramatically. The nature of the jobs have to reflect the products and the processes by which they're made. And here we are. Yeah. And we get to talk here at a museum, a paper museum, a lot about science, technology, engineering, and math. Great. Because that's what this is all about. Um, and lucky us, people don't pay an awful lot of attention to their money. So we get to talk about things people have no clue about. Yeah, as I watched this big and large picture of a hundred dollar bill, I didn't realize that some of these things are even on it. Yeah, not that I've had a lot of hundred dollar bills. No, no, I, under, I understand. <laughs> you know, most of these things, most of the hundred dollar bills, two thirds, as I recall, circulate overseas. Ah, yeah. This is the world's currency here, and there's a whole bunch of people out there who don't speak English or read English, so there has to be means of authentication besides uh, being able to read this stuff. Right, visual. The, the most important feature um, of US currency for authentication for counterfeit deterrent is actually not the most recent, it's the oldest. 80% of all counterfeits around the world are caught right at the point of transaction. Mm. You already know that's real. You don't know why. But I just know. You know, and that's exactly why the sound and the feel. Mm. Right, it's not your typical piece of paper. Yeah. There's something a little different about it. There's, there's nothing else in our existence that sounds or feels like this. This is the universal language of United States currency. Wow. So if you're a, hmm, you're a rug dealer in Tajikistan. Okay, I can do that. Yep, and um, I want to buy a rug from you. Um, how are you going to know if this thing um, is real? Well, Okay, it's on good paper, but how do you know this isn't a $1 bill that's been bleached and overprinted with a five on an inkjet? Banknotes are printed using high pressure engraving presses. 
Mm. They do two things. They give you incredible detail that you can't get with any other printing process. You can see every hair in his head and every stitch in his coat. Right, you wouldn't get that with a copy machine. Absolutely not. But the really cool thing is that <clears throat> when the press smashes the paper down into those ink recesses, it actually deforms the surface of the paper. So not only can you see every stitch in his coat, but if you take your nail, you can feel ah. every stitch in his coat. So no matter where you are in the world, one, two, three, you're guaranteed to have a real bill. That's amazing. So we have the most simple analog tactile ways of authenticating and deterring. And then we have these incredible pieces of science, technology, engineering, and math. And this won't change, but this will. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. It's been great. And let's bring, let's bring Bill back on and we'll just say a big goodbye to everybody. So thanks everybody for joining us on another edition of STEMWorks in the Burks here with Crane Currency. We'll see you next time. Study hard. Bye.